Welcome to this presentation from Pawpaw TV. We present an original lecture from Dr. Jerry McLaughlin, Professor Emeritus of Pharmacognosy at Purdue University and winner of the Tyler Prize. He is talking about his life's work. It is presented in nine parts. Since he is talking about a serious condition, we remind you that his remarks cannot be taken as medical advice but are intended for educational purposes only. If you are viewing this from a country that does not allow this kind of teaching, please stop viewing now. And if you are sick, see a doctor. Maybe you can find one that speaks herbal medicine. Okay, so just a few of these results here. Some breast cancer patients. So take patient number eight there. That was Nona, one of our secretaries. And I saw her crying at the picnic. She says, I got breast cancer. She's crying, you know. And. Uh, so I said, hey, in October, this was in, in 2001, I said, in October, we're gonna have this pawpaw stuff ready. Do you wanna try it, be a guinea pig? She said, yeah, I'll do that. So she tried it. She took it, and then she took chemo one round, and they couldn't find the tumor anymore with MRI. So they gave her five more rounds of chemo, and she lost her hair, she got sick, you know, and all this stuff. And it came up until June, that was in December. She got up until June. And then she went in to the surgeon. The surgeon had to get his money. So he looked her over and he couldn't find a tumor either. So he did an ultrasound. He said, oh, I think there are three little blips there. I'm gonna go see what they're like. So he went in there and he cut them out and he took the whole left breast. And I said, I wanna see the PATH report on this. And sure enough, the PATH report said, oh, get traces of ductal carcinoma. So okay, maybe he was justified in taking the left breast. Well, then they followed it up with radiation. And all the time she kept taking pawpaw, okay? And so by September, the time September rolled around, she'd been through all this stuff and they couldn't find any traces of tumor in her. 14 so axillary lymph nodes did not have the tumor and so she has a sign on her desk that says I'm cancer free. So I think that was pretty good. Patient number 12 with breast cancer is 72 years old, stage four. Uh, one of Dr. Forsyth's patients, been through chemo, nothing was working anymore so she's refractory. It's getting worse. And so she put on pawpaw for six weeks. That's the only thing that was any different, just taking the pawpaw for six weeks. Her tumor marker, the CA2729 marker, went from 160 down to 80 in six weeks. So we cut the tumor antigen level in half, and the size of the tumors reduced significantly. The next slide. Okay, with prostate cancer, number 48 was an old guy, 85 years old. And uh, they, he wasn't a good candidate for surgery, so they put him on pawpaw. And in six months, we kept his, his PSA level, essentially level, from 36 down to 30, which is pretty good. But then at that point, he got allergic to it, and he got itchy, so he quit taking it. And I actually met him. And uh, let's see, number patient 56 uh, had stage four cancer. He's in North Dakota, and he had a huge tumor in his left neck from prostate metastasis and one growing on his hip bone and one in his abdominal cavity that they detect with x-ray. And the radiologist called Dr. Forsyth and said, what's going on with this guy? His tumors have reduced them in mass by 25%. And he'd been taking pawpaw for six weeks and he was only taking two capsules instead of four. He didn't get the instructions right, you know? And so that looked pretty good. And the last one there on the PSA, this prostate specific antigen is my eye doctor. This guy got prostate cancer and it was an aggressive type and so he started taking pawpaw and he did the, the radioactive pellets as well but anyhow he went from 4.5 to 1.7 with the radiology and the, the pawpaw so he's pretty happy. He still charged me for these glasses. So. The next slide. Okay this patient uh, was from Australia and she had lymphoma for six and a half years and gone through three rounds of chemo, but the chemo didn't work anymore. This resistance business had come on, so they developed that pump, you know? And her white cells were going up, and uh, on 35 days on Papa, we knocked the white cells from 34 back to 11. And the lymphocytes were the ones that were going crazy, and we knocked them from 67% back to 30%. And both of those values are back in normal ranges. So against the soft tumors, like lymphomas, we have good results. I don't have good results with leukemias because I haven't had many people with leukemias try it. But it worked in the mice, 
with leukemias and extending theirs. I think it's going to work with leukemias. And we got some little kids, incidentally. I sat down and calculated doses out for them uh, with leukemias. The next slide. Okay, lung cancer. Uh, yeah, this guy was one of four size patients as well, and his antigen level went from 275 down to 222 just in two months. And he gained weight, and he'd been in the bed in a wheelchair before, and he's walking around now. So we're extending his interval, right? And uh, he'd previously been on two years of chemo, and chemo wasn't working anymore. The next slide. This, is, this guy's picture is in that wellness report. He's got a picture with the horse in there. And uh, his name's Eddie. And in December of last year, he was supposed to go home and die. And he'd had melanoma, that's black mole cancer, from his arm. He's a farmer in Oklahoma, <clears throat> and had gone to his lungs. And he had these masses of the stuff growing in his lungs. So the doctor sent him home and he couldn't breathe, burned to breathe. And in four days on Papa, he could breathe again without burning. And then his strength returned and he's out. He just wanted to go see the cows one more time. He got up and testified in one of these meetings. He was there, you know, and it brought tears to everybody's eyes. You know, Dr. Keller said about half the audience was crying when he got done. And, and so Eddie, can now ride a bicycle and walk, and he goes down and sees the cows every day, and he got out and plowed with the horses this spring. And also two lipomas, which are little fatty growths, little fatty tumors on his arm, they disappeared. And another interesting thing is that his toenail fungus that he's had for 10 years has gone away, taking pawpaw. So it's antifungal as well. The next slide. So this just gives us a summary. Uh, Alkaline phosphatase, that's an indicator of bone cancer. And I got a big hug from a lady in East Lansing, Michigan, who was on our study, and she's back in the normal levels with the alkaline phosphatase uh, with bone cancer and raising her kids and carrying out a normal life, and she's supposed to die last year. So uh, now, no hair loss, no bone marrow depression, no GI bleeding. We've seen benefits with cold sores and shingles and toenail fungus and MS and acne, athlete's foot. I got it in a lotion for paint, you know, for kids' faces. One of my one of my workers in the lab was in there. I caught her in the lab making up more pawpaw lotion. What are you doing this for? Oh, I'm giving it to the kids. She had all the teenagers in her neighborhood are using pawpaw lotion for acne. It's working great, you know. Psoriasis, eczema, all stuff. Unfortunately, we're having trouble getting it into the lotion and salve form because they want to heat it in the manufacturing process and they kill the activity. So I've threatened to go there and make it myself by hand so we can sell it. The next slide. Okay, so this is the pawpaw story and that's where we are with it. And uh, there's handouts of the slides in the back in the table if you're interested and want to see that. And I'll answer questions if I can. Thank you very much for your attention here tonight. You may find some of Dr. McLaughlin's published work listed at the National Library of Medicine website, www.pubmed.org. Look for entries under the term acetogenin and his name, McLaughlin, comma, JL. Copyright 2008, Richard Lund. All rights reserved.